Yes. Sir. See limitations of financial statements and interpretation techniques. So this is the chapter we are doing today. See, of course, some limitations are there in the financial statements even. Financial statements are affected by obvious shortcomings of historical cost information and are also subjected to manipulation. Yes, if you show everything at historical cost, it is not realistic. Why? Because if you are showing things at historical cost, the things right now, suppose if I show a building which I bought for 5 lakh rupees 20 years back and I am trying to show that at historical cost, do you think it is justified? No. What is justified? It's value as on today, yes. the market value, correct? Yes. That That is more realistic. Yes. So historical cost... So fair value only, sir? Fair value, yes, yes. Yes. The fair value or revalued amount, whatever. Okay. Uh, fair value in case when you are speaking about investment property, in case of property, plant and equipment, revalued amount, okay? Okay, sir. So that is one of the biggest shortcomings. So financial statements are intended to give but you know, financial statement should give the latest and fair presentation of financial performance of an entity over a period and its financial position at the end of that period. Of course, the IASB's conceptual framework and IFRS are there to ensure as far as possible that they do. Yeah, this conceptual framework and IFRS should ensure that the statement, whatever is prepared at the end of the year, definitely should give fair presentation and financial position to the users. However, there are a number of reasons why the information in the financial statement should not just be taken at its face value. Yes, if we take that at face value, it doesn't look realistic. Why? Because in uh, as of now, the things would change na, in real terms. Correct? Now, there are some problems with the historical cost information. That means if you are showing the uh, assets at historical cost, what problems you may face? Historical cost information is reliable. See, historical... I am saying some word. Historical cost is reliable. Why be, uh, is reliable? Why because? Sir? His, re, historical Sorry. cost is reliable. That means a value what has got created to the asset that you can see now. You bought that asset at some value. So you, Sir? you are having network issues I think. Hello? Sir? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, historic sir, historical cost is the cost which we purchased the asset only. Yeah, that, sir? yeah, we purchased yes. the asset. That is the cost. Okay, the cost yes, at which sir. we purchased is historical cost. That is yes, reliable. Sir. Why it is reliable? Why? Because the value at which you purchased, you know, after all the bargaining, bargaining is and everything. But that yes. is not relevant. But that is not relevant. What is relevant? The current fair value. Current value is relevant. Correct? Yes, sir. Why? Because current value is what is the real value of that asset? Now, yes, sir. which can be higher, which can be higher amount or lower amount. So historical cost information is reliable and can be verified. Of course, when you see the books, when you see the bills, when you see the invoice, you can verify. But it is less relevant as the time goes by. The value shown for assets carried in the statement of financial position and historical cost may bear no relation, whatever to uh, what their current values and what is what it may cost to replace them. Of course, whatever you are showing at historical cost definitely may not may bear so, no relationship to the value. And, and what it may take for you to replace them. Hello. Sir, lot of distance. From my now side, no fine. distance. Now it's fine, sir. Yeah, the corresponding depreciation charge will also be low. Of course, when you are showing at historical cost, that value was less. So depreciation will also be less. So leading to overstatement of profits in real terms. That is what if you are showing an asset at 1 lakh which you bought long time back. Today its value is 5 lakh. So your depreciation what you are showing is less value or more value? Less. Less value. So that is nothing but that leads to overstatement of profit. So the financial statements do not show the real cost of using such assets. If you take historical cost. And there is problem with the current value also. Current value can be anything. Na? Someone will be ready to pay 5 lakhs for that asset. Someone will be, will be ready to pay 4.8 lakhs for that asset. So, see things, every time you may face problems. So, we are discussing the 
issues okay this is particularly misleading when attempting to predict future performance of course if you look for if you look at the future futuristic values is what is relevant not the past values so it could be that a major asset will need to be replaced in two years of time at vastly more than the original cost of the asset currently shown in the statement of financial position of course when you will be when you want good performances in the future you need to replace the old assets so old assets when you replace suppose after some years uh, it will be more than the original cost of the asset currently what you are showing in your books correct so this will then entail even uh, entail much higher depreciation and interest payment yeah if you will be buying the if you will be replacing your old asset and buying a new asset your new asset value will be high so depreciation amount will be high and when when you will be buying the new asset at some with with, with some finance you, if you finance it by some bank you need to pay the interest payments also now in addition overstatement of profit due to low depreciation charge could have led to too much profit having been distributed yes so with less depreciation high profits you are distributing more profits to shareholders in form of dividends or like eps increasing the likelihood of new asset purchases having to be financed by loan of course what happens if there is a overstatement of profit you are sharing much profit with the shareholders and you are having less cash with you so when you have less cash with you you have to take loans and then loans if you take again you have to pay interest in the future correct so the information yes, could sir. have been obtained just from looking at financial statements these things you should know if you study something properly now in the period of inflation financial statements based on historical costs are subject to an additional distortion so inflation is nothing but the times when the values of things are very high so at that time if you take historical cost uh if if the financial statements are still based on historical cost there's a distortion why because the realistic values are not seen sales revenue will be keeping pace with inflation because you have to sell at a higher price because of inflation and cost also would be high since cost is high sales would be high and using fifo uh, inventory uh, being used to be valued as the earliest Uh, see you know about the fifo method na what is fifo method first in first out this leads to understatement yes, of cost of sales and overstatement of profit this is the result of inventory carried at historical cost so what happens if you use fifo method during inflation uh, inflationary times your cost of sales would be less correct your profit would be high and that leads to overstatement of profit if you are showing a historical cost understood the concept and with lifo what happens with if you value your inventory at lifo because of inflation your cost of sales would be high your profit would be less and you pay less taxes correct that is when you so, use the when you don't use the historical cost so did you understand the concept shall we shall we move forward yes sir so ajeshwari last point read it read it once if you get in doubt i'll explain once again you read this yes. i'm saying fifo method if you use you are you are selling your first in first out uh, stock yes. na which you bought yes. first so the, for that the cost of sales will be less why because inflation yes. effect will not be there in that and your profits will be high okay so this leads to under under acha that one okay cost of sales overstatement of profits yes so if it is at historical cost yes in this case yes when you are yes. using okay okay sir chapter is a matter of if, 10 to 15 minutes more than i'll move to next chapter immediately i thought of taking standards really speaking but if i take standards now now after all these things i i i'll tell you what is left over the only things which is left over is revenue from contract with customers accounting for income tax tough chapter not easy one that will really test your knowledge these accounting again a very dry and uh, like headache thing and financial instruments very easy chapter but students uh, understand students tend to take it not immediately why because new things all these are for so i wanted them to be taken at a very good time and properly because these four things if you understand properly 
only four chapters are there now left over after finishing these three okay so uh, provisions and contingencies that is that madam will take care of that i will take care of this four so we will take after the uh, after after this now creative accounting so you know what is creative accounting showing more creativity now let's uh, so showing more creativity can happen in two ways either company wants to show more or higher profits by like uh, showing less expenses that means they want to capitalize by cutting costs hello by cutting costs they want to capitalize much of the expenses to the assets that means they want to add more and more expenses to asset okay and capitalize it so that what happens if they if they don't expense and capitalize the profit would be high in the first year correct or wrong yes hello sir. so profit would be high and they can attract shareholders or investors to uh, invest money uh, in the company can you repeat i am saying if company does more of capitalization or they yes. they capitalize more of the cost that means they add more of the cost to asset value and they yes. try to increase the asset value the expense is less in the first year na no? yes sir since the expense is less in the first year your profit should be high that you are showing purposefully to Yes. attract the shareholder correct yes because this this asset what uh, the expenses whatever you have added to the asset value that with that whatever you have capitalized will expense in the future by way of depreciation so in future your profits will be less but this year your profits are high na first year yes sir so. because of capitalizing so this kind of creativity they do and if they expense they would try to show less profits to pay less taxes so this kind of creativity the accountants would do okay so i'm reading out the points if anything is uh, uh, there you can trace it out listed companies produce you know what is listed companies produce their financial statements with one eye on the stock market so as i said they try to do all this thing manipulation where possible they like to produce financial statement which shows analyst what they are expecting to see analyst always want good profits from the company good results from the company so that they can they can suggest people to buy company shares so voice is breaking so so these people change those financial statements and not in... change they do creative accounting as i said you right yeah, now okay. repeat once voice was breaking see you are having network issues uh, no sir uh, no network issues sir today see meghna is clearly understanding rajeshwari meghna you got my voice na no? Yes, it is so not today. your fault, not my fault. It is network fault, Rajesh. Can you explain once again, sir, this point? See, if I go on explaining like this, uh, repetitions, then. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I'm explaining. I'm explaining. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Listed companies produce their financial statements with one eye on stock market, and where possible, they like to produce. financial statement which show analyst what they are expecting to see so listed companies they they make financial statements in such a way that uh, like uh, it would be appealing to the potential investors who wants to invest in the stock market why because they want to show more profits as i gave an example here with more by by showing a higher profit or more profit what they are planning to do they are planning to pull investors to invest in their company correct now yeah. for instance a steady rise in profits with no peaks or troughs is reassuring to potential investors see peaks and troughs is ups and downs see a company which is having ups and downs is kind of more risky but a company is having very good trend only increasing trend do you think investors have problem with such company no so companies try to show this things to the investors okay so this so has means been, it, sorry they show it as the investors will to see the company as uh, rising no sir the, um, the investors always want to see company as a profit making machine not they are they won't even tolerate ups and downs see if there are ups and downs in in things in life do you do you think it is happy or always if it goes up it is good always goes up it is happy yeah. always want to be happy na we don't want to be sad but sad uh, these two things are these two things go hand in hand 
okay in companies case you always want a good performance you cannot compromise with bad performance in which you are investing correct yes, yes sir. that is what i am saying so people would always go for companies with steady profits higher profits they don't want any peaks or troughs any ups and downs sometimes high profit sometimes low profit no companies could sometimes achieve this by using provisions to smooth out peaks and troughs so what they would do they would make some some provisions like we can have a loss in the future or uh, we can have some uh, expenses in the future for that they make some provisions beforehand so that uh, whenever there is a problem or issue or one time uh, one time expenditure if they are they are they are incurring these provisions they can use so that uh, things would be smooth in the company correct uh, th there will be less peaks and troughs because company is having all the arrangements done There is a difference between provisions and uh, reserves, sir. You should say. I already repeated this point. Provisions are made for specific purpose to meet some obligations. Reserves are nothing but you are you are uh, accumulating company uh, the pro, you are accumulating money for future investment. Okay. Okay. There is a purpose for reserve. Now reserves are there to accumulate profits, but uh, provisions are made for specific to meet some obligations like provision for tax, provision for doubtful debts. those are expenses correct okay sir so this has largely this has been largely outlawed in is 37 uh, like uh, uh, like the provisions we will be studying about this when we'll be starting the chapter but companies can still achieve similar effects by delaying or advancing invoicing or manipulating cutoffs or accruals what company can do they can still achieve good effects how they can achieve good that means they can achieve they can try to achieve benefits they can try to show their company as a profitable one always without peaks and troughs how they can delay payments to suppliers so that the cash would be uh, the cash reserves would be shown high they can pay something in advance itself so that they can get very good discounts that would increase profit got my point or they can manipulate cutoffs or accruals like something which is outstanding uh, they can they can manipulate those things okay are you following please yes sir yes rajeshwari so oh, are i got disconnected so just now i joined now rajeshwari again you will tell to repeat so better you can uh, watch the no, video sir. that no sir i will see the video sir See, I am not frustrated with that. Network issues will be there, but yes, again, yes, if sir. I go back, na, my flow would be. I will lose yes, my flow. Yes, yes, okay. yes, sir. That's fine. <laughs> Please understand me. I am never ever frustrated with uh, you children. Correct. Sure, sir. Yeah, directors who are paid performance bonuses. You know, like directors would be paid for their good performance. So, uh, like the directors who. so you know that will make them to show a good thing always on the statements on the paper they don't they cannot compromise with less uh, profits that means if they show high profits that means they capitalize more and more expenses expense they expense less they capitalize more that would increase the profits na and they would get higher bonuses for good performances correct because everything is there in their hand they always want to show spectacular results an important aspect of improving the appearance of the statement of financial position is keeping gearing as low as possible yes if they show the loans and uh, the debt finance as low as possible that is what would attract the investors to invest in the company why that would attract the investors to invest in the company because that is it is a less risky company more solvent company we learned in the ratio analysis correct right? investors know that interest payments reduce the amount available for distribution and potential lenders will be less willing to lend to a company which is already highly geared so the companies directors always want to show less gearing they always want to arrange more uh, funds through equity why because high debts would make uh, the company to pay more interest payments which would reduce the profits and point number 2 is no one would like to invest in highly geared companies it's very risky yes so a number so what they can do what kind of creative uh, accounting measures they can take now this is only the last paragraph of this 
topic and most important paragraph whereby you can learn about creative accounting correct when you become accountants in any company you will understand how the creativity uh, what kind of creative accounting goes on what accountants do so a number of creative accounting measures are aimed at reducing gearing see there are lot of options now you can take a property on lease instead of buying it when you buy a property you have to take a big amount of loan correct so that increases your gearing and you have to pay more interest but in case of leasing you need not pay you don't take loans instead you just agree to make some periodic payments every month correct hello are you following yes sir so, so, periodic payment yeah so suppose 6 lakh is the lease uh, liability for me uh, for 10 years divide the divide the 6 lakhs in 10 years and divide divide 6 lakh in 10 years how much tell me so some points about leasing also we'll discuss 60000 per year divide by 12 per month 5000 you are paying us lease payment and here are you doing any down payment or are you taking any loan no this is just a future obligation as per the contract you need to pay got my point yes yes sir so that would save a lot of money of yours and even the risk also gets reduced but here you cannot here in finance lease uh, even though you have profits or losses it doesn't matter you have to pay that fixed amount that because it's a binding agreement now ah. so everything has its pros and cons correct but regulation is increasingly catching up with these measures so what company does to reduce the gearing they can lease the property they can take a property on lease so that they need not take loan and pay high interest amounts so in past parent companies could find reasons to exclude highly geared subsidiaries from the consolidation and could obtain loans in the first place via such quasi subsidiary so what companies used to do in the past parent companies used to a uh, parent companies could find reasons to exclude they 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 excluded highly uh, geared subsidiaries that means the subsidiaries whereby which were lot of debt ridden lot of loans those subsidiaries have taken they used to exclude them from consolidation and could obtain loans in first place via such quasi subsidy that means they could show they by taking that subsidy into consideration they could take big loans and exclude subsidies from consolidation with that no debt they are showing correct so that loan never appeared in the consolidated statement of financial position see company this this parent company wanted to take a big loan so this parent company should, should approach the bank na please tell me yes or no yes sir now what these guys are yes, doing they, they formed a subsidiary company and that subsidiary company is taking a loan okay so the loans are shown in this subsidiary's books not and they this parent doesn't want to consolidate this subsidiary with them so now parent is saved na they are not showing big loans now yes sir so what happened is this was a loophole so parent again, is saved now yeah they are not consolidating with the subsidiary so loans no. are all shown in the books of subsidiary na okay it used to happen in the previous past now this cannot happen now you cannot exclude those subsidiaries also you need to disclose many things why are you not including that subsidiary why are you not uh, consolidating with them now it cannot happen now however you need to consolidate whether it's a debt ridden subsidiary or taking loans on the name of subsidiary company it doesn't matter okay because things have been rectified in ias 27 Shall we go forward? Yes, sir. Assets could be sold under sale and leaseback yes, agreement. I already explained you leasing and all, and uh, this this point I clearly told you. Okay. Now intra group transactions. So what is this intra group transaction? I think you already know this intra group transaction very well. But see. what companies yes, are doing what companies how companies are taking advantage of this see understand there is a concept called transfer pricing i will tell you what they do it is common for entities to carry on activities with or through subsidiaries and associates yes they do uh, they do transactions among themselves also why they do there is a reason behind that 
or occasionally to engage in transactions with directors or their families that is related party transactions what is that what is this related party related transactions related party transactions when transactions happen with the known person yeah, yeah, with the with people whom you know yeah yes yes because you are going to uh, learn this afterwards in the corporate reporting subject okay sir finishing this chapter but you know every chapter has its own uh, explanation what to do see if i leave points and go like that again you will be having a number of doubts okay so the point is that such transactions cannot be assumed to have been engaged in at arms length or in the best interest of entity itself arms length is as if you are selling to outsiders all right the arms length is what you sell to outsiders you cannot sell that uh, if i am selling to some customer i'll sell at a higher price the same product i cannot sell to my subsidiary at higher price na no? i cannot do that so uh, actually if it if i sell my subsidiary also at the same price that is good for my company but the point is that such transactions cannot be assumed to have been engaged in an in, in a arms length transaction or in the best interest of entity itself which is why investors and potential investors need to be made aware of them so what happens here transfer pricing can be used to transfer profit from one company to another and intercompany loans and transfers of non current assets can also be used in same way so what happens i'll tell you transfer pricing suppose a company is in united states this they do suppose a company is there in oklahoma and there is a state called nevada you know about the famous cities las vegas and all it is there in nevada so uh, oklahoma you have a state, here the taxes are 40% for example uh, just a second Yeah. So what companies can do is here the tax rate is yeah here the taxes are thirty percent here the taxes are kind of let's say twenty percent. So what this parent would do is they will not sell the goods here. Instead, what they will do is. Acha okay okay. I will tell you just a second. I will say that lesser price. which will uh, increase more profits and till it yeah yeah so what happens the parent would sell the goods to subsidiary whom they will sell hello hello the parent would That's sell it. the goods to whom subsidiary correct okay so they can do the sales in this part also in oklahoma but here the taxes are very high they need to pay more taxes so they will sell the yes. goods to this nevada subsidiary at lower prices and here whatever the profits are generated generated are higher profits and those profits they pay less taxes so they try to save taxes by because of this transfer pricing arrangement okay now seasonal trading so this is another issue that can distort reported results many companies whose trade is seasonal position this year and after their busy period to minimize time spent on inventory count at this point in time the statement of financial position will show a healthy level of cash and receivables and a low level of trade payables assuming most of them have been paid in one season see seasonal business is nothing but in season they will be doing very well uh, in off season they will not be doing well correct so many companies whose trade is seasonal their trade is seasonal it seems in festive season they will be earning lot of money position their year end after their busy period that means their year end they will be showing after the busy period only why to minimize time spent on the inventory count at this point in time the statement of financial position will show a healthy level of because you know in the season they will be earning good amount na so their 
statement of financial position will be very good that time thus the position is reported at the moment when the company is at its most solvent that means when they are getting lot of revenues very high revenues and have very less loans to pay uh like uh, that time they want to report their results the the companies which are involved in seasonal trading business so a statement of financial position drawn up a few months earlier or even perhaps a few months later when trade is still slack but fixed cost still have to be paid may give a very different picture yes that means during the season if they are uh, they are showing everything looks good but if when when off season comes they will be having higher fixed cost that time they'll be having less sales or less revenue they'll be generating that time the picture would be different than the time when their sales were very high okay asset acquisition the major asset acquisitions just before the end of an accounting period can also distort results so we already learned now whenever company want to per, uh, sell some asset okay that is uh, they have to show it in the held for sale category but what happens is companies what they are doing they are purchasing the assets just before the just before the end of the accounting of period. period so why the statement of financial position will show an increased level of assets and corresponding liabilities that means if they have uh, they have taken the assets on loan or they have taken the assets on lease lease liability but the income which will be earned from utilization of the asset will not yet have materialized this will adversely affect companies return on capital employed you know like when they purchase the assets in this way uh, they would not get good benefits from the assets na no? immediately so uh, then what will happen your roc will be impacted how this they will try to this what they will do suppose my company's assets were 10 lakhs and my company's earnings were 1 lakh so on 1 dollar i was earning 10 cents now what happened at most sudden my company has purchased one asset at the end of the year now my asset value has gone to 20 lakhs and my earning is still 1 lakh because immediately i cannot use the asset and generate revenues so now on 2 dollars i am earning how much so is it this is good or this is good please tell me first one sir yeah so here i am putting more money to earn this one the same profit so my roc has got impacted now companies will do this purposefully to show losses to hide their oh. to hide their scam or something at times they will be doing scams na or else one more reason can yes, be sir. less profits so that uh, less taxes that also they can they want to do acquisitions and disposals a company may have acquired or disposed of a subsidiary or a division during the year and the effect of this will need to be isolated in order to assess the underlying performance so see what happens companies sometimes they buy or they sell their own subsidiary or division during the year and the effect of this will need to be they don't show that effect they don't show that sale effect or purchase effect that we will be dealing in chapter 19 in more detail why did why they do that see what are the accounting policies and the limitations of rational sales see i have already explained you about accounting policies na if you change accounting policies then what you have to do you have to give retrospective effect correct yes sir yeah but why see at time it is see first of all there is a uh, point called consistency the companies should always uh, use whatever the methods they are using consistently they should not change it when they change it they should disclose it that means that should be in the best interest of the company but at times what they do they do they try to manipulate the results for example straight line method diminishing balance method here when they were using diminishing balance their profits were uh, like uh, high or less yes sir in diminishing balance yeah with the passage of the profits time, will be less yes with the passage of time diminishing balance method will show less uh, depreciation na so profit would be yes, high yes sir yes yes that time uh, like yes, uh, so they want to change now to straight line to lower the profits 
and pay less taxes. Is it a manipulation? Yes, they do it purposefully. They do it. They want to change from LIPO to FIFO. There, may, there may be some motive to do that. Correct. So they want to show less profits. They want to give less dividends. They want to pay less taxes. All these things they do. Yes, sir. These are all manipulation. And see, ratio analysis. I have already explained you all the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, we will, will, will just go for give a reading to this. Okay. Okay. The consideration of how accounting policies may be used to manipulate company results leads to some of the other limitations of ratio analysis. In a company's first year of trading, there will be no comp no comparative figures, of course. So there will be no indication of whether or not a ratio is improving, because some ratios are relative measures like gross profit. Gross profit is not an absolute measure; it's a purely relative measure. Why? Because for come to know whether this year is good, you should know previous year gross profit. Until and unless you know previous year gross profits, you cannot decide whether this year was a good year or not. Comparison against industry averages may not be that revealing. A business may be subject to factors which are not common in the industry. Of course, see if you want to compare your results with the industry average. Therefore, I suppose I speak about an industry. I am speaking about car manufacturing. There are many players or uh, companies in this, like uh, Maruti Suzuki, like Hyundai. So these guys are the uh, these guys are car manufacturers. They are companies in this particular industry, correct? So comparison against industry averages. So this particular industry of car, that's car manufacturing industry. There are ten firms. There will be average performance of this industry. So. Comparison between industry averages may not be that revealing. They don't reveal it seems. A business may be subject to factors which are not common in the industry. Yes, sometimes there may be some factors which you may face individually, but that is not the case with all the firms and the entire industry. Correct? For example, a fraud happens in Hyundai. Do you think the fraud happens in entire entire industry? Please tell me. Hello. I am asking, a fraud can happen in Hyundai. Do you think the the fraud fraud can happen in entire car manufacturing industry or yes, the strategy? No, yeah, the strategies. No, yeah, the strategies of Hyundai company uh, is not going uh, well in their favor. Do you think that is going to impact the entire industry? No. Ratios based on historical cost accounts are subject to distortions. I already explained you about that thing. Okay, why? Because you are. Uh, Undervalued assets will distort ROC, na, no? because your assets value will be less. So uh, uh, your denominator will be less, your numerator will be high, and you will be kind of uh, showing higher EPS, that higher uh, ROC. Why? Suppose the asset value should be 10 lakhs, but because of historical cost, it is 5 lakhs, and my revenue is 1 lakh, 1 lakh. So here on 1 dollar, I am getting 10 cents. Here on 1 dollar, I am getting. 20 cents if i convert like that double na here i am spending yes. 50 cents yes, and sir. getting 1 dollar like that i'm i'm getting 10 cents that is great na yes. ratios are influenced yeah because whatever yes. the accounting policy company chooses based upon that the ratios can differ for example a company wants to uh, show the assets at revalued value so roc may be high the financial statements are subject to manipulation and ratios can also uh, be uh, give will give you distorted or uh, like wrong information about company and uh, like inflation that time they will be using uh, lipo instead of fifo to manipulate or fifo if they use overstatement of profit uh, over uh, higher higher CO, uh, less, lesser cogs so overstatement of profits and no two companies even operating in the same industry will have same financial and business risk profile of course that will differ so comparison of two companies based upon ratios is also sometimes not good why because level of gearing may differ in different companies why because honda can raise money with lot of uh, share capital do you think a new company which is entering like mahindra and mahindra suppose it's a very new firm it may not get money in form of share capital it has to take loan and it, its gearing level will be 
last and final point of the chapter other issues are there other issues which should be looked at when assessing an entity's performance factors to consider how technologically advanced it is if it is not using the latest equipment and processes it's it, it risks being pushed out of the market at some point or having to undertake a high level of capital expenditure of course see today's scenario uh, the world is very technologically advanced if you use the same old things and sold uh, same old techniques you will be out of the market correct so if you use old things uh, your performance would not be good if you go for new things you have to buy latest equipment your cost will be high but that would improve your profits in the coming time okay now what are its environmental policies see if a company is a big polluter lot of penalties on it and many people don't want to invest in a company which is not considering nsg regulations properly that is like uh, sorry esg that is environmental social and uh, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, compliances if they are not following all the rules and regulations so people don't want to invest in such companies which are poor at these three things what is the reputation of its management so you need to give these things actually and if it, if it has attracted people and kept them that is a positive indicator its mission statement why it is existing for what what is its mission to achieve and whether they are fulfilling or not reputation as an employer how, how they are are they treating sorry yes so can you, this point so sorry so can you repeat once again your voice was breaking yeah what is the mission what is its mission statement see for what the company is existing and why it came into existence what it wants to achieve what is its reputation as employer like are they giving uh, proper salaries or uh, remuneration to their laborers or employees what is the market size of the company uh, and how strong is its competition is it like uh, is it in danger or of takeover all these things should be considered done with this chapter sir it's theoretical only no problems theoretical only three chapters but we need to sometimes discuss na i don't discuss then what do you say do you want one more chapter or tomorrow i shall take tomorrow sorry i'll not be available day after tomorrow So now, one you take, sir. Sorry. Now, one you take, sir. Another chapter. Okay. Sir, how much time will it take, sir? Now you are asking a question. It will take one more hour, I think. Okay. It will take surely. Then how? I see. I cannot polish yes. and move away, na? I cannot polish the things Which like that. Which one will you take? i want to justify things the our status first let us check only three pages in this i did not forget yes. i will cover surely in this bio agriculture is there reporting finance yes 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 i know One, two, three. See, these are simple ones. No problem. That we can. That I will be taking two sessions from Tuesday onwards, eight thirty to ten thirty, and Madam will be taking one six uh, thirty something like that. Uh, so we will be taking two two sessions. I already discussed with Madam. One, two, three, four crucial chapters. Others are normal ones. Can be can easily be dealt with. Okay. Okay. Only four crucial chapters are there. Rest of the things are done. My my worry is you people should become good in all those sub chapters first of all. 
so accounting for inflation shall we do okay sir i will see how much time it will take because i even did not have my dinner no one is there to cook i had just one vada pav in this full day today only one vada pav and one this what do you say one pineapple juice from morning till now what to do working full day no time we will see how many pages both the chapters are having this is page 1 two, 3 4 it's a big one only we will take that non profit that will be better okay let's start it's a small one let us wind up what is there in this See, we are dealing with specialized non-for-profit and public sector entities. So, uh, specialized is for special purpose. The the entity has been created. Non-for-profit is they are not working with profit motive, and the public sector entities, of course, they also don't work for profit motive. They want to work. They work for service motive. Okay, they want they work with service motive to give good service to the. For example, if I take about Indian Railways. don't expect they are earning uh, they are uh, existing for profits because if you take private uh, like uh, uh, what we say a uh, service to go from here to delhi your ticket should be very very high but if if you see the fares in indian railways it is fairly less okay so the primary aims the accounting requirements for non for profit and public sector entities are moving closer to those required for profit making entities yes however they have different goals and purposes see profit making or non profit making these are the two entities which exist uh, this is solely for profit this is not for profit and but these are also kind of moving towards this now why because even though they are for not profit but they what are, they definitely have to Uh, like uh, prepare the books of accounts and they have to see whether because many people donate their money for these entities correct donations they, they get money in form of donation so they have to account it that means where each and every penny is spent so they whatever the surplus they make out of it they don't share it with the uh, do, donators the people who have done the donations but they use it for creating more services and expanding them for uh, expanding them uh, to more people okay to cater needs to more people that's what so what organizations do we have in mind when we refer to npo central government departments and agencies local and federal government departments publicly funded bodies providing healthcare further and uh, higher education institutions charitable bodies the first four are public sector entities and the charitable are not are private not for profit entities but they are non for profit they are private but non for profit non for profit entities have different goals and purposes to uh, profit making entities and responsible to different stakeholders of course however they are dealing in very large sums of money and it is important that they are properly managed and that their accounts should present fairly should accounts present fairly the results of their operations of course see in companies shareholders invest their money but in these companies donations they get donations so they should account everything and they sh- because since lot of money is involved in this companies uh, people should not take advantage uh, of this charitable trust because many of the profit what these guys earn are exempted from tax government won't con- collect taxes it seems from them so uh, people should not take advantage of that and this and the and the people who are managing these npos should also not take advantage of people's donations 
they should they should uh, use it uh, honestly until recently public sector accounts were prepared on cash basis that is receipts and payment basis i think you have done your non trading concern chapter in your intermediate so you know that hopefully if you were good student in your intermediate a transition is still in progress which will get them operating on accrual basis but transition is going on no update till now in line with normal practice in the private sector so there is also a conceptual framework that means the framework of concepts for these non for profit entities okay give me a second i'll just drink some water and come hello hello yeah i said i am going to drink water okay sir yeah i am back so conceptual framework for non for profit entities the international federation of accountants published phase 1 of a public sector conceptual framework in 2013 so who has prepared this ifac who prepares the conceptual framework for we have a conceptual framework now so iasb also has conceptual framework which we have studied in the first chapter so they prepared uh they published only the phase 1 of a public sector conceptual framework in 2013 long time back it has some four chapters it seems role and authority of conceptual framework like wh what is the why they have prepared this and what is the role of this and how what kind of authority it has objectives and users of general purpose financial reporting so these these companies also have users it seems what are the qualitative characteristics that means whatever the statement they prepare what kind of what is the qualitative characteristics of that and what is the reporting entity based upon the conceptual framework okay how they derive this as a reporting entity so definitely you know whichever prepares the financial reports at the end of the year is a reporting entity what kind of characteristics they should have the information should be relevant reliable already we studied in the first chapter objectives and users definitely the people who donate money okay government etc who wants to keep an eye on these kind of organizations so that people should not misuse these organizations for their own different motives So in preparing the conceptual framework, IFAC had to bear in mind that non-for-profit entities have different objectives, different operating environments, and other different characteristics to private sector business. Some of the issues that arise in considering financial reporting by non-for-profit entities are insufficient emphasis on accountability or stewardship. So, what are the issues that arise in considering financial reporting by this? because there is less emphasis less importance on accountability and stewardship they are less accountable it seems so a need to broaden the definition of users and user groups so who are the users they should not say only donate the people who are donating are users what is what is uh, who is the user of your uh, of your service the emphasis on future cash flows is inappropriate see they should not strive and uh, should not always die for cash they are existing for non profit reasons na so even though they get cash or not no problem because donations they will get insufficient emphasis on budgeting so budgeting they should also budget they should not use things uh, uh, which are costly and uh, which are out of the box they should try to restrict their expenses accountability and stewardship non for profit entities are not reporting to shareholders definitely 
सी कंपनीज आर अकाउंटेबल टू दी शेयर होल्डर्स ना एंड डायरेक्टर्स आर लाइक स्टीवर्ड्स टू दी शेयर होल्डर्स दे बिकॉज दे वर्क लाइक एजेंट्स टू दी शेयर होल्डर्स दे आर बिकॉज दे आर वर्किंग ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द शेयर होल्डर्स बट इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट दे कैन अकाउंट फॉर फंड्स received and show how they have been spent of course accountability should be there we know that they are not someone to answer shareholders but they should also uh, show like how they are spending money in some cases resources may be contributed for specific purposes and management is required to show that they have been utilized for that purpose that means the money has been spent for something for opening a hospital unit or something so that money really has been spent for that only or not should be shown perhaps most importantly taxpayers are entitled to see how government is spending their money because government is a non for profit uh, organization it seems many of the companies which are government companies are public companies non for profit and they solely work for betterment of the society but we are very much concerned what taxes we are paying to them is really been used for our development or they are doing some corruption or eating away that money now yes sir users and user groups the primary user group for npo is providers of funds the donate the donation the people who give donation so they definitely want to know about the about what their money is been used for cash flow focus of course these are non for profit organization now they should not be much be looking for businesses and all uh, like uh, whenever they don't have money donations they can get and they should be doing work at cost effective in a cost effective way so that they can save money and they should budget also budget is nothing but financial planning so that uh, they could save more and use that saving for more and more uh, like uh, inclusion of more services and for betterment of the society the conceptual framework itself is not uh, the only solution na Uh, or uh, the concept preparation of concept is not the only thing but following that is also important thing so regulatory framework has been uh, has been made so that everyone should follow the, the concepts rigorously so there is a general move to get public bodies reporting under accrual system many private non for profit organizations still use cash accounting so what is happening is a need has been created that government should use accrual system now being a non profit organization even government entities or government companies private companies still go with cash accounting that means private charitable trusts regulation of npo is important now principally because many scams have happened it seems in the previous past principally local and national governments and scam government doing scams is also a biggest question mark because they are non for, they are not for profit now they are not for profit entities but they are doing scams they are not uh, see when we see our roads do you think our roads are up to the mark we have all the pothole roads i know yes, india is a sir. country of 135 crore people and only 6 to 8 crore or 10 crore people pay taxes the government can also say yes, we are sir. getting very less taxes we can't make a good quality road yes. but in uk and us they cannot do that because people are paying the yes, taxes sir. very genuinely and honestly systematic yeah so regulation of non for profit entities principally local and national governments and governmental agencies is by international public sector accounting standards which come under iafc so what are these international public sector accounting standards all the international uh the, since we are studying about the international financial reporting standards so international public sector accounting standards are public sector whatever they are in uk should follow international standards it seems so which are specifically for these entities so the ipsab is developing a set of standards based on ifrs so to date following ipsas have been issued so presentation of financial statements of public sector entities cash flow statements by these entities net surplus or deficit for the period how much they have made any errors or changes in accounting policies effect of changes in foreign exchange rates if they are if they are supranational like world bank and all they will be giving funding to other countries and non for profit uh, world health organization supranational organization so foreign exchange changes borrowing cost and consolidated statement of financial uh, financial statements and accounting for control entities so these standards actually you need not study not there in your syllabus also and need not go for it even but should remember this because this chapter is not completely given to you 
just theory they have uh, uh, introduced. Do you have this in Kaplan? Need Rajiv? to see, sir. Yeah. So accounting for investments in associates, if they have the financial reporting of interest in joint, they make joint ventures, revenue from exchange transactions, rep reporting in hyper inflationary economies, construction contracts, inventory, leases, all the standards who has made for non-for-profit organization. See, government companies will be there now. Government companies will be constructing roads and buildings. So construction contracts, they'll be giving and they'll be taking even. And uh, they'll be using, they'll be, see all these big companies boss, ONGC, NTPC, big government companies, they'll be, they'll be coming across all these things. They'll be having PP, they'll be also having investment property, in, they'll be also raising funds in the form of equity, uh, leases, they'll lease properties also, like many of the government banks, they lease, they take properties on lease and they operate. You may be knowing Rajeshwar, you, 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 like madam is a bank employee, so you may be knowing uh, banking transactions, how they go. I hope yes, you may be knowing. Uh, yes, I sir. Hope, I hope you may be knowing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because madam yes, sir. definitely discuss not times. No, sir. No, not maybe much. Sometimes, sometimes she would have discussed casually. You did not take it seriously. Very, just, just. Yes, sir, very less, sir. But uh, I'm interested in that subject. No problem. Just take it easy. <laughs> Impairment yes, of CG, CGUs and. Uh, uh, and uh, non-cash generating assets and related party disclosures. If at all government companies are headed by some some officials and they give uh, contracts to their known known people, politicians they do na. They they will be giving contracts to their known uh, uh, like uh, yes, companies sir. that are doing scams and all. So all these things are there. And these guys are already stressing for accru accrual accounting now for public entities. So you know now what are the characteristics of non-for-profit entities in private sector. See, I won't explain all this. You already know. They are only for profit motive. Even though in private sector, even though they are only for non-profit motive, even though in private sector or public sector. Public is government companies, private is normal charitable trust. Okay. So uh, their objective is to provide goods and services to various recipients and not to make profit. They are, recipients can be any general public. See, I have a hospital nearby my office, CC Sherrock. It's a non-profit -for organization, charitable trust hospital, whereby doctors only charge 100 rupees for a patient. When you go to private, they charge 500 rupees in Apollo and all. So they are generally characterized by the absence of defined ownership because there are no shareholders, not so uh, like there's no pressure also in them and they need not transfer or anything they need to give. And they have, they may have a wide group of stakeholders to consider, like public. For example, public is the biggest stakeholder for Non-profit organization. The revenue generally arises from contributions, donations, membership fees, etc. There's a club. Many people take membership fees in clubs, na? They pay membership fees. Library, they pay membership fees. They don't earn from sales in general. Subscription fees. Their capital assets are typically acquired and held to deliver services without intention of earning a return on them. So they they don't see all these return 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 they should get from the assets and all. Uh, they on, they only kind of see that this asset should be used for the betterment of public. Here also things are same, but only here government comes into picture. Generally, they are dependent. What is the source of revenue for government? The main source, correct? Hello. Taxes. Taxes and fines, penalties, all these are also revenue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. CGST and this. Yeah, taxes. Non for entity specific issues, while general trend is to get non for profit entities producing accounts which are based as far as possible on the provisions of IFRS and which are generally comparable to those produced for profit and making entities. There are two issues which have been to be resolved. See, they have to make as per IFRS kind of only thing, but there are two things. Actually, they are not using accrual accounting and uh, they are using cash, they are doing on cash basis, correct? So while there has been a general assumption that for a profit, a public sector entities most move to the accrual basis will result in more relevant and better quality reporting. No actual cost benefit analysis has been undertaken on this. Actually, th till now, they have not adopted this accrual basis. One of the arguments in favor of adoption of accrual basis is that 
it will be possible to compare the cost of providing a service against the same cost in private sector that means see here they are using cash basis private sector is using accrual basis comparison between this and this is not possible but if you change this into accrual basis what we can do is we can really understand what suppose railways indian railways you have now suppose government is giving chance to private parties to run their own trains so here the, the private trains will be run by the people and they'll be using accrual accounting for that here these guys will be using cash basis so do you think indian railways performance can be compared with the private railway performance no but both use accrual it becomes easy so better thing we can betterly understand in better way we can understand who is more cost effective and who is more cheap giving services at less rate less price are you following hello yes sir yes sir okay almost all we are coming to the end of the chapter now definition of a liability see conceptual framework defines liability as a present obligation of entity arising from past events the settlement of which is expected to okay we know the definition of liability a liability is recognized when the amount of outflow can be reliably measured okay public benefit entities are subject to a commitment to provide public benefits they are liable to do that but there is an issue to be resolved over whether this commitment meets the definition of liability yes so on 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 uh, orally they say this is my liability this is my liability but on books they don't do that in so that is the reason why we are not able to question them so in this situation there has been no exchange entity has not received any goods or services for which it is required to make settlement see what happens when we uh, pay money to some shopkeeper he has to deliver he is liable but when you pay taxes to government government is giving you the assurances but but do you think that uh, it is the the government's okay on papers everything is a responsibility but you are are you paying money directly to the government for some service no sir no. if you pay directly then there is a commitment you, if you take a railway ticket then there is a commitment from yes. indian railways but what the taxes we pay definitely is in form of it's indirect uh, money paid to them na so there there is a issue of settlement so a distinction can be drawn between general commitments to provide public benefits and specific commitments to provide public benefits specific com commitment can be regarded as present obligation if there is a specific commitment from government that they have promised to do then that is okay but it can be argued that the obligation only arises when the entity formally undertakes to provide something such as non performance related grant if the grant were performance related the entity would be able to withdraw from agreement if the performance targets are not reached so specific commitment is government has given you a commitment that if you perform well we will be giving you a grant but if you don't perform then so specific cases it's all right correct if you don't perform then that agreement won't be there na government won't give you a grant correct or wrong please tell me yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. there is also a issue of reliable measurement governments in particular often find themselves funding projects which go a long way over budget suggesting that reliable measurement was not obtained at the outset so this issue is still being debated by this uh, body it is of major importance in financial reporting of social policies of government performance measurement is definitely whether they are able to perform well depends upon how effectively they are giving you services at less cost uh, definitely the profit is not the uh, uh, performance measurement for them but their services how good they are and effective and economical and uh, how how people are satisfied with them and uh, how they are uh, trying to reduce their cost so all these things should be measured but cannot be measured on par with the profit making organizations okay because they don't have that pressure to remain solvent in solvent nothing like that no one is claiming done with this chapter almost all and uh, there are some public sector entities here uh, these will have performance measure laid by the laid down by the government government will tell you na about the performance measures like how will you check the government's performance measurement government is giving uh, houses to the homeless people uh, they are doing some percentage of rubbish collections 
and uh, making the area clean number of children in care adopted education to the peop- uh, to the children below 14 years age in india all these things are there best value is based on principle of four t's so best value is nothing but value for money they should give us who the government value for money uh, in this in the case in uk they do we expect also from the government but in uk they do here we don't we expect but the governments don't do so uh, best value is uh, is based on the principle of four t's challenging why how and by whom a service is provided comparing performance against other local authorities yes you can compare and see whether who is doing well you see mysore city many times they take name of mysore city and indore city the most cleanest city in india so we compare yes. hyderabad with them correct consulting yes, service users and local community and using fair competition to secure efficient and effective service most can can with this chapter now do you want one more chapter or enough enough sir so from tomorrow you won't be taking no? only morning evening i am not available okay sir and uh, this is done from morning sir for morning no 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 online i cannot take because i need to sleep i need to pack my bag everything is there so no class sir tomorrow no class i am traveling i said na yes sir okay sir evening times are not suitable to suitable for me and in fact uh, morning times are not suitable for you you already said yes and in fact i may be also having lot of work uh, packing and also i need to rush to airport by 12:30 tomorrow okay so uh, don't worry after coming i'll be taking two two sessions and there also i'm seeing for some arrangement what i can do and what i can do best for you people i'm seeing okay. but i cannot guarantee it's a marriage house so getting yes sir yes i'm stuck hello this is a six six months back uh, book tickets okay fine this is done now so yes. i i really say hopefully i am trusting you people to go through all the topics properly and prepare till now whatever we have done after coming i'll rush like anything with perfection and we'll finish and start again okay okay thank you thank you sir